Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBaron.com, and this is the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. It's available now for $139. Okay, so here is the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Let's take a look at the uh, hardware first. You can see obviously we have a 6 inch display here. That's uh, 800 by 600 pixels of resolution. It's all grayscale. It's touch sensitive, but it's not touch sensitive in the capacitive or resistive manner you would find on uh, smartphones. It's actually a grid of beams that is transmitted across the surface, and um, your finger actually interrupts the beams. Developed by a company called Neonode. You might be familiar with them from their Windows CE based smartphones uh, like the N1 and the N2. Up front we have controls for paging. The Nook button down at the bottom. Take a look at the profile of the device. It's about 12 millimeters thick and the entire thing weighs about 197 grams which is just shy of 7 ounces. Uh, the back is uh, covered with a soft touch rubbery kind of finish, uh, nice and grippy. You can see the uh, covered slot for the micro SD expansion card. Um, doesn't always fit too nicely. The bottom, we have points for mounting into cases and things like that, as well as the micro USB charging port. You notice the uh, power button up top here, so how you can actually turn it on and off if you really had to do so, although in general the device's battery uh, lasts so long that's not really necessary. Barnes & Noble claims that the battery in the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light is good for a full two months of use at um, one half hour per day if the glow light's not used and uh, half as long, uh, one month worth of uh, 30 minutes per day use if you do use the glow light. It has two gigabytes of uh, internal storage but then of course you can use that expansion slot to add more space if you need it. And just to show you that the new Nook Simple Touch with the glow light and the old version without the glow light are basically the same piece of hardware. Here they are next to each other. Uh, you can see we've got a light gray frame here as opposed to the uh, gloss black frame on the original device, uh, otherwise they look identical. Thickness is exactly the same and uh, the rear panels match up perfectly as well. One of the things that makes the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light so power efficient is its e-ink display. You can see that even though the device is turned off right now, uh, we still have a perfectly readable grayscale image here, a photograph in fact. And that's because e-ink displays only require power to set the picture. They don't require them to maintain it. So there's no power running right now, and the picture stays exactly where it is, which is totally in contrast to um, LCD, AMOLED, or just about any other display technology. The downside, though, is that the display writes are a bit slow. So you can see if I activate the device by pressing the button here, you'll see the image update, and then eventually it draws a uh, swipe to unlock feature down here if I do that. Again, you see the screen rewrite. So while it's not expending any power to maintain the screen like how it is now, it does require power every time it rewrites, and you can see the flashing of the screen. Barnes & Noble has done some uh, optimizations, though, to mitigate that when it comes to actually reading pages, and I'll show you that a little bit later. In any event, here is the home screen. It's the current book you're reading. You can just tap on it at any time and get to it. You can see we can swipe through here to get from page to page. You can also just tap on the right or left edge. And then you have the ability to use the actual hardware controls as well. If you tap on the page, you get some additional controls. So I say I could go to a specific page somewhere in the middle. Or I can type out the particular page I want to go to. You also have the ability to change fonts, not just size, but also the type of font being used. Context searching, you can go to the table of contents, um, a few other things you can do as well. You can always get back to the home page by pressing the Nook button, at which point the home button right here will take you back there. It'll always show you the most recent page you're reading. You can also tap this little control in the upper left hand corner to get back to where you were no matter where you are in the system. So even if I'm in say my library I can quickly get back to the book I was reading. Let's go back to the library 
allows you to move through the books you've purchased, including the pre-installed Nook guide. In other words, if I go back home, it now shows that I'm currently on page three of the Nook guide. The Nook recommendations you see down here in the bottom are based mostly on the uh, most recent book you've purchased. I picked up a Dune book here, and uh, I mentioned some other Dune books that I might like to purchase as well. We'll go to the store and do a search for something else. You can see the on-screen keyboard, T-O-L-K-I-E-N, for some uh, J.R.R. Tolkien books. I'll just pick up uh, whatever comes up first, and we will take a look at the free sample. It's going to have to download that. On a Wi-Fi connection, you have uh, free Wi-Fi access from any Barnes & Noble store as well as AT&T's Wi-Fi network. Read the sample. And if we'd like it, we can go ahead and buy it, confirm it, and then you see it's going to download the complete title which point I could read it and notice that some books, including this one, have the ability to be lended out to other Nook users. So if you have a friend, you can lend it out to them so that they can read it um, over the course of a week or two, I believe. So here we are in that short story we just purchased. I'm going to uh, jump ahead a few pages here. Uh, go forward with the, the down buttons. You can use either hand to go forward. And the top ones go backwards. Let's change the font size just so you can see what I'm doing a little more easily. And I'm going to show you how you can look up information on words. So I just highlighted sacrilegious by long pressing on it, and you can see what the definition is right here. Let's choose a, another word. And I could add a note here and say, this is very interesting and refer to that note at a future time. The key feature of this new version of the Nook Simple Touch though of course is the glow light. You can activate that by long pressing on the Nook button. See it's quite bright and it's, uh, you can go through a menu and turn it on this way, and which gives you the option of changing the brightnesses. So you can actually put it quite dim, which is perfect for reading late at night. You have quite a range of uh, brightnesses here. And obviously the brighter it gets, the more power it uses. So you could set it nice and dim, and very easily turn it off and on. going to turn it up brighter though so you can see it's actually lit from the top of the device you can see the very bright edge here and actually a little bit of green showing through from some of the internal structures of it all the light comes from the top edge but it's quite evenly distributed it actually it's pretty easy for reading let's go into one of the books here and flip through You can see it works quite well in terms of uh, lighting the page appropriately. I'm going to jump into settings here just so you can see some of the other things that are available. Um, here's the controls for the glow light. You can see that it's accessible from the settings menu as well. So information on the device itself, battery percentage and how much storage is available. Wireless networks. Some information on the screen, you can set the timeout and um, screensaver style. The original Nook Simple Touch used the author's uh, picture, but the uh, glow light version defaults to nature. And while you see the screen flashing, it's relatively uh, responsive. Get down to some of the customizations you can do for the uh, reader itself. By default, as I mentioned, the uh, 
bottom two buttons down here go forward. Uh, I tend to prefer that the top do instead, so I switch that when I'm using a Nook. Some controls for the shop, so you can require a password so um, your children can't go off buying uh, $4,000 worth of books when you're not looking. And, of course, the Nook has some social networking integration. You can link to Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Google and stuff, and you can publish you know, what you're reading or notes or um, you know, highlight passages and things like that. I had mentioned some of the optimizations that Barnes & Noble had put into the Nook Simple Touches display, uh, which basically has to refresh the entire display, typically. And what they're doing instead is they're not refreshing the page until you hit six full pages. So instead of wiping the page and redrawing it, they're actually drawing white pixels where they're currently black in order to erase it and then redrawing all the black. It makes it appear smoother and faster. And then every sixth page, which I believe is this one, it resets the entire page to make sure that the quality is maintained. Because you can, if you look really closely, you can see that the quality of this text right here after a refresh is definitely better than the quality that you get right before it refreshes. So that's my quick look at the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch with Glow Lights, a capable e-reader device with that built-in light for nighttime reading. Great if you'd like to read books in bed without uh, waking up everybody else in the room. For MobileBurn.com, I'm Michael Oral. Thanks for watching.